Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Monday. Hope we're having a wonderful first kind of full week of February here, at least the start of it. And I know it's super early, but I'm hoping all of you have a wonderful week and hopefully you do something interesting this week. Hopefully you go out there and make a difference in the world somehow. Uh, at the end of the day, that really should be everyone's goal is to wake up and go change the world for the better. Uh, now, with all that said, we do have a little bit to talk about today. We have a big time storm system still cranking out west, and we also are getting closer into the idea of this pattern change down the road uh, through much of the east, and that includes the potential for some more of uh, kind of a wintry scene in certain places, and we'll definitely take a look at that here uh, throughout today's video. Uh, now, I will also ask you, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. At the time I'm recording this, waking up, I think we're like three or four people away from 8,000, so we're really uh, quite literally right on the doorstep. But uh, the big goal is to get to 10,000 by the end of February here if we can. And I think it'll be very possible, especially with this pattern change here uh, going later on into the month. And also, if you like the video, like it, comment, let me know what you're seeing out there. And definitely consider sharing the video with somebody that you think might find some value in it. Alrighty, with that said, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Because again, I do want to give you the latest information in as timely of a manner as possible here. So here we go. Uh, taking a look at satellite imagery, we do still have this low pressure kind of spinning away over uh, kind of the Gulf Coast states, if you will, right there along the border. That is going to slowly kind of work offshore here throughout the day, and luckily uh, conditions should improve as a whole. Now out west, a different story where this storm system is really still just now cranking up and a lot of rain, wind, and flooding on the way through much of today. Now taking a look at radar imagery, we'll start here in the east. Again, really not all that much ongoing here. Uh, the only real precipitation we've got falling is in the southeast, as well as up into New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, where we are still seeing some snow falling. And in fact, we had some pretty big time blizzard conditions uh, up that way just earlier this week. So you folks are uh, kind of really getting it good and uh, will continue so over today, although we'll definitely uh, kind of begin to improve. Now, further to the south and east, where we have more of a uh, immediate rainfall threat here, and most of the rain falling over Florida. Uh, you'll notice here, kind of from Orlando southbound into the Keys, back towards Tampa, Fort Myers, Miami, seeing some rain this morning. And that will continue throughout the day today as this low pressure, again, just slowly kind of uh, meanders around and begins to work off over the Florida coastline. And I tell you, I cannot draw an arrow to save my life, but uh, you get the point. <laughs> Nonetheless, again, it will slowly kind of just drift over the peninsula today. And by the time we get into tomorrow, it should be far enough offshore into the Atlantic uh, that and most impacts are really gone by then. Now back out west, again, that's where things are a little bit more interesting here, a little bit more active. We've got widespread winter storm warnings in pink here, uh, widespread flood watches in the uh, green color on your map, and then high wind warnings in kind of uh, the Dijon mustard colored if, uh, color, if you will. Um, so I don't know, I guess that's the best way to describe that color. At least that's the first thing that came to mind. So uh, that's what I'm going to use. And uh, anyway, again, just a lot of precipitation out this way. As the storm system is continuing to just kind of flood in all of this specific moisture, uh, that is why we have these, uh, this flooding threat as well as this big time snow threat. Again, we just have so much available precipitation to kind of ring out in the atmosphere here uh, that uh, we're going to definitely, you know, get the most out of all of this. Now, if you happen to be watching up into the northern plains, we do have some dense fog advisories for some foggy conditions this morning, and that will likely continue later on into this afternoon, but should slowly burn off by the time, uh, you know, the sun kind of comes up a little bit and begins to burn on through some of that fog. All right, let's go ahead and start in the East Coast, and I'll uh, kind of run you through the next uh, couple of days or so, and then uh, we can take a look at um, the West Coast and what's going on out there, and then we'll end the video out by talking about the overall pattern here in the long range and what exactly that could mean for your neck of the woods. All right, so this is about 4 o'clock this afternoon, what we're expecting. Again, just some scattered leftover showers from South Carolina, at least I-20 southbound through southern Georgia and into the great state of Florida here. Again, as this big area of low pressure just slowly kind of works on through, continuing to bring some scattered showers and can't even rule out a couple strong storms in Florida this afternoon. Uh, specifically, I think, ex excuse me, specifically, I think, uh, into the southern sections here from kind of Lake Okeechobee down into the Everglades through Miami, the Keys, and then kind of Fort Myers southbound. We could have a couple strong storms uh, working off the Gulf, much like we saw yesterday. And in fact, yesterday was a bit of a bigger deal than maybe a lot of people had expected. We had multiple tornadoes there, uh, even into the Florida Panhandle and up into southern Georgia, where uh, there wasn't as much of an outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. So again, hoping everyone's okay out that way, and uh, hopefully they got the warning. But uh, again, we did mention, and I even mentioned the day before, that I thought that threat area would probably get shifted up into southern Georgia. So uh, again, hopefully uh, everyone uh, took heed of that warning. 
Um, okay, actually, I don't know why I'm switching maps. Sorry, I just had a joke pop in my head. So back to the weather, though. Um, so again, that's uh, throughout today into this evening. That rain continues to slowly work on through. And by the time we're waking up Tuesday morning here, um, again, most of the rain offshore. Can't rule out a couple showers left over there, especially into eastern Florida, I think. But by the time we're getting into Tuesday afternoon here, uh, most of that rain is gone and uh, nicer conditions begin to kind of take over. Now, one thing I will mention here that I forgot to mention earlier on this afternoon, don't be surprised if you do see some uh, scattered snow showers here into the Cape Cod area of Massachusetts and just southeastern Massachusetts in general. Uh, could see some snow showers work on through really as early as this afternoon and into this evening. So again, if you're up that way, uh, definitely don't be caught off guard by it. Could even accumulate to a quick inch or two. Uh, maybe isolated spots could quick up, uh, pick up a quick uh, couple of inches, maybe one to three, but really more of a dusting than anything else for those of you that do see the snow fall. And then again, as I said, everything kind of clears on out here by the time we get into our Tuesday afternoon and uh, the storm system slowly begins to work offshore. All right, now talking about the west a little bit, and uh, let me go ahead and back the map up to where we currently are here. So uh, here we go, Monday morning, again, just continuing to see all of that on-flow shore. Uh, on-flow shore, that's not it, onshore flow, there we go. Um, it's going to be a long week, I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, again, a lot of mountain snow in the blue here, and then some, uh, you know, valley rain and coastal rain in the green, and this is really uh, quite an impressive storm system. So we've got a lot of wind here helping to push this ashore, uh, which is going to lead to a couple different problems. One, um, obviously, just going to cause wind in general at the surface and that's why we have those high wind warnings but also that's going to enhance the moisture flow here and just really allow us to wring out pockets of very heavy rainfall. Another thing it could do is help to add some rotation to the atmosphere, some speed shear and maybe even some directional shear. In fact, would not be surprised to see a couple rotating thunderstorms here. Let me turn my phone off. A couple rotating thunderstorms here try to work ashore, especially into central California, into the coastline there. That's not out of question, and we'll watch that throughout the afternoon. Have a way to get watches and warnings should a tornado warning be issued for your area. That's definitely not out of the question today here into, again, the central coastline of California. Now, as we go further into today, just more of the same. It's going to keep on coming, and another big-time story is going to be all of this rain into Southern California, the L.A. metro area, really going to get socked into this uh, atmospheric river here, and that flow, or you can kind of see it on this map very well, that corridor of rain uh, really begins to take over, and it's a very easy pathway for that moisture transport that just kind of ride over the same areas, and we're going to see big-time training of rain throughout the day today uh, into overnight tonight. You'll notice still raining there into Southern California before eventually, I think, we get into Tuesday afternoon here and things begin to calm down a little bit. Rain and snow become a little bit more scattered in nature. The winds will begin to calm down. The tornado threat will be gone by this point. And uh, again, we'll just kind of watch for um, some more rain, but should now begin to shift off towards the four corners as well as that mountain snow here by the time we're getting overnight Tuesday into early Wednesday morning here pictured on your map. And now that continues here into Wednesday morning. Uh, you'll notice again mountain snow through the four corners and valley rain. That continues and eventually, uh, then finally our storm system by the time we get overnight Wednesday into Thursday finally ejects into the northern Great Plains and could bring some snow here through uh, North Dakota and Montana and then rain off towards the east and south of there. Uh, so again, going to watch that. But again, by the time we get later in this week, things really clear out here into the Rockies. Still some scattered rain, snow showers, but much nicer than what we we're seeing out there today. Now, the biggest threat I think we really need to talk about here is the flash flooding threat. And in fact, we have a high risk of flash flooding right through the LA Metro. Not often we see this. This is the highest level they can issue at the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, so you got to have a way to get those watches and warnings today. Again, flooding very likely, at least a 70% chance of seeing flooding in your area today. And now, maybe not exactly where your house is, but you know, within kind of your normal commute. Uh, so you got to, again, be ready for that. And that threat even continues into tomorrow, once again, into Southern California and now into Southern Nevada and into western Arizona could see some of that flooding as well. Uh, so again, just kind of watching that. That's the biggest threat with the storm system over the next couple of days. In fact, um, water-related deaths are the most common types of death uh, that we see with the weather every year. So, um, you know, it could be one of those kind of days that uh, if you don't have a way to get those warnings and you're not prepared, uh, you unfortunately could become a statistic and we don't want to see that for anybody, obviously. So again, share the news with your friends that might be out here in Southern California. All right, now how much rain are we talking? This is just within the next 48 hours. Again, we can see half a foot of rain up here into the mountains uh, just north of LA here, and I probably should know the name of them, but uh, if you're local, I'm sure you do. Uh, and uh, anyway, again, just notice this pocket of very heavy rainfall here into Southern California. That's the big time story. And again, just kind of backing up what I just showed you with the chance of flash flooding. 
Snowfall off, uh, also obviously going to be a pretty big time story here for a lot of folks. Pretty high chance of seeing some big time snow out here into the northern Rockies. And this map really hasn't changed from the past couple of videos. But again, just kind of find your location on the map. And if it's kind of a bit messy to look at, go to weather.gov. Uh, click on your exact coordinates on the map or search up your zip code. And it'll give you a way better kind of in-depth exact snowfall forecast here. All right, to the south of there, again, more snow. In fact, way more snow here into the southern Rockies than the northern Rockies. The Sierra Nevadas obviously still feed us snow to come just over the next couple of days, but this goes out about a week or so. And then more of that snow here into the mountains of Nevada and then into the four corners here through Utah, Arizona, northern and uh, western New Mexico, and into the mountains of Colorado, specifically uh, southwestern Colorado. They are really getting in on some big-time snowfall totals. In fact, a couple feet of snow uh, quite likely for you folks. All right, that is kind of what we're expecting over the next couple of days out west and in the east. Now let's kind of move this out a little bit and talk about the longer range pattern. What is on the horizon here for us folks uh, who are kind of in a bit of a lull right now? Everyone east of the Mississippi is kind of wondering, uh, well, at least those of you that didn't see tornadoes yesterday, are kind of wondering, well, where's the active weather gone? We had such an active stretch really from December through uh, much of January. Where is it at? Well, uh, we're going to be in a little bit of a lull, and all of that is thanks to this big time ridge in place. You'll notice these big red colors showing up on your map, kind of buckling these isobars northward. Uh, this is going to really flex this ridge and allow for clearer, nicer, warmer, and more spring-like weather over the next couple of days. Uh, now you'll notice though, we're kind of sandwiched in between two other areas of interest. Uh, the one on the right is that uh, clipper system, or not really clipper, more of an upper level low at this point, uh, that kind of worked on through uh, the south yesterday and brought those tornadoes. And then the one on the left here into California is obviously that storm system that we were just talking about. Now, as we move later on into this week, that storm system out into California is eventually finally going to make it out of the Four Corners and into the Southern Great Plains going into this coming weekend and into early next week. And that's when this overall kind of nicer spring-like pattern is going to begin to break down. And uh, we will see likely another low pressure form here somewhere uh, over the Southern Great Plains or maybe even just the Central Great Plains. That part still needs to be ironed out. But either way, that likely kind of, I think, moves across the country and eventually going later into February, kind of closer towards Valentine's Day and towards the 20th of February, uh, we could see a bit of a pattern change that allows for cold air to then work behind some of these storm systems and maybe even more storm systems kind of try to work in at the same time. Uh, and we could see a return to the more cold and snowy side of things uh, here going again from about the 17th of February towards the end of the month. And that's going to be a big time story here, I think, in the long run. All right, so what could this look like on radar imagery? Well, this is, uh, we'll just go ahead and jump right into Wednesday afternoon here. You'll notice, again, still all clear. Most of that precipitation still out into the Rockies, now eventually kind of working into the northern Great Plains here for our Thursday afternoon, uh, bringing some snow through Montana, North Dakota, but rain into uh, Minnesota and areas kind of southbound. What this is also going to do is really allow for that fetch of uh, Gulf moisture to kind of advex northward here. And we can have a very spring-like day with even some showers, maybe a couple storms uh, later in the week through the Central Plains, eventually into the Ohio River Valley here going Thursday into Friday, and then eventually into the Mid-Atlantic Southeast and into the Northeast by the time we get into our um, kind of weekend here. You'll notice some of that rain working on through. Now, eventually, this is going into Sunday afternoon. That rain finally works on through, and some cold air begins to funnel in behind. But at the same time, another storm system, likely a more potent one, begins to form. Now, the location of this storm, we still got to figure out. We're about a week away from this kind of getting into the eastern half of the country. Uh, but latest European model from overnight, again, shows a big shield of rain, maybe even some wintry precipitation here on the northern side. And uh, it's going to be very important with the track of the slow who sees any sort of wintry precipitation. Uh, but you'll notice the 540 line here, or our kind of rain snow line, digging pretty far south here through the Ohio River Valley, uh, even into sections of the deep south. So we could see a return to wintry weather. Uh, I think for somebody, but especially no matter what, just return to more active weather with potentially some rain here, uh, kind of into the 10th through 15th time frame of February before that storm system finally works on through. And on the backside, we could really again see that cold air funnel on in and maybe some more storm systems develop on the backside of that. And we could see a return to the snowy side of things. That'll definitely be a big time story that I will be watching. 
Now, again, as I mentioned, uh, placement of this low pressure is oh so important to the forecast. And our latest European models from overnight, you'll notice we've got a very big spread still, but overall, they've got a pretty good idea where this is going to kind of form anywhere from Texas, uh, kind of through Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. So a pretty southern section here uh, of the country likely to see this storm track. And uh, with that, likely seeing rain here through much of the southeast, I think, at the end of this weekend and into early next week. And maybe not out of the question to see some snow on the northern side of things. Uh, but that, you know, we'll just have to get closer to really have any real idea of how that goes. And then again, you see all of these kind of gray dots on your map indicating where that low pressure could be. Kind of just working on through the Ohio River Valley into the Tennessee River Valley. And then finally up into the northeast. So that's kind of the general thought process with that storm system. All right, so the chances of seeing snow with this, well, it's not off the charts, but there is definitely a signal on our models here. Um, here we go, Sunday afternoon, our models hinting at... Um, you know, the chance for some snow breaking out here over sections of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, excuse me, not Arkansas, um, New Mexico, rather, uh, and then even up into potentially the Ozarks of Arkansas, I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's Sunday afternoon. Eventually, these snowfall chances begin to work through the Ohio River Valley, the Great Lakes region, and then into the northeast here, going into about the 7 to 10 day time period. So uh, these numbers are not uh, off the charts by any means, but we'll continue to monitor them. Could definitely produce some snowfall for somebody uh, here in the long range. Uh, but right now, just kind of a little too soon to have any real idea of who might see snow and really too soon uh, to know, um, you know, how much. So just kind of stay tuned and come back uh, in the coming days for kind of a better idea of what we're expecting. All right, temperatures, something I'm sure a lot of you are very interested in. This is this afternoon. Again, a little bit chillier into uh, southern Georgia and into Florida where we have those showers and cloudy weather moving on through. But uh, to the north where this ridge is in place, uh, quite the opposite. We've got plenty of very... Um, above average temperatures here. And this is in degrees Fahrenheit, departure from normal. So, uh, for example, over North Dakota, temperatures today could be 30 to 40 degrees above what they should be this time of year. And then down into Southern Georgia, about 20 degrees below what they should be this time of year. So, just kind of give you an idea of how this map works. So that's Monday afternoon. If we move this into our Tuesday afternoon, you'll notice those warm temperatures just continue to kind of lock into place here and spread over much of the country. Again, a little more average into the southeast where some cold air is kind of getting trapped a little bit, uh, specifically really the mid-Atlantic portion of the southeast and into Florida. And then Wednesday afternoon, more of the same, well above average temperatures, still holding on to some more average air into the southeast. Thursday afternoon, that average air in the southeast becomes a little bit warmer. Everybody starts to get in on these above average temperatures. Friday afternoon here, again, just very above normal, uh, quite uh, out of the normal, excuse me, uh, high temperatures here for our Friday. And then into Saturday, more of the same. Into Sunday, you'll notice uh, things kind of begin to quiet down a little bit. And this is about the time our storm system is forming out here. Uh, into the southern Great Plains. So this kind of makes sense, that storm forming, kind of adding some cloud covered things, uh, bringing those temperatures on down a little bit. And by the time that storm system crosses and going into kind of, again, about 10 days from now, look at these blue temperatures now really starting to take back over. And we've got, uh, you know, a pretty good area of below average temperatures. And if I bring this even further ahead, you'll notice uh, models hinting at maybe even a bigger cold outbreak about 15 days or so from now. So again, this is way out there, uh, but just know the models have been hinting at this for a while, even for a week, they've been shown well out into the long range here uh, that we could see a return back towards the cooler side of things. And I think that's very likely here, again, going into the second half of February. But for the next week or so, uh, we've got pretty nice weather on the way for, again, most of us. And now some of us are going to see some rain out of it, but either way, uh, well above average temperatures, more spring-like uh, than maybe winter-like here for a lot of folks. So get out there, enjoy it, get some of that vitamin D, uh, go hear the birds sing a little bit and uh, go hug a tree or something. Um, but anyway, again, I hope you all have a wonderful kind of start to your week here on this Monday and I will see you all tomorrow.